Hello and welcome to Trop Series Recap. This is part one of a three-part series of a story of a middle-aged man in Paris, France. We are introduced to him as he is checking in for a janitor's job at the world's largest art museum, the Love Museum. As he sweeps and mops, he admires some of the famous and priceless art pieces such as the Mona Lisa. Among the admirable jewelry from all over the world, there is one that captures his interest. It is this queen's necklace. Beautiful, ain't it? In this scene, we are introduced to the man's ex-partner Claire, and we learn his name is Hussein. Hussein and Claire have a child, and they have an amicable relationship raising their son. They are discussing the boy who is now at the cusp of puberty. We learn one of the contentious things about their relationship is that Hussein hides a lot from her. Not even what he does, and Claire does not need anything from him, and gives back the money he offers. However, as she gives him a goodbye smooch, he still slips child support money in her pocket. Looks like it's something he always does. Hussein goes downtown to Bodhi to whom he owes cash, where Bodhi wraps him up because he doesn't have the money yet, and dares to show up. To verify his brokenness, he is dangled from the balcony, from probably the 10th floor. However, he manages to convince them that he intends to steal a pricey queen's necklace from the art museum and recruits them to steal it during the upcoming art auction. The heist plan is set in motion, a same running point, showing his crew the museum layout and body on board. Back in 1995, Hussein is in the streets of Paris with his dad, Mr. Babacar. A car has stalled on the road and Hussein helps the stranded driver to fix it. Flash forward as guests arrive, the wealthy and the notable. Hussein is among them, showing up as one of the bidders, looking dapper in a suit. They say, fake it till you make it, confidence is key. His crew led by body checks and using stone and badges, and the auction commences. The queen's necklace on display belonged to Marie Antoinette. Yes, the Marie Antoinette who was guillotined. The auctioneer announces the necklace belonged to the Pellegrini family. It had been lost. They found its pieces and reconstructed it. Mr. Babacar worked for the Pellegrini family as a chauffeur. The auction of the necklace is graced by Juliet. Juliet and Hussein have a history since young age. She is the daughter of Mr. Pellegrini. The proceeds of the sale are dedicated to the Julietine Pellegrini Foundation. As bidding goes on, Bondi and his crew handle the marauding security guards. Back at the auction, Hussein bids the necklace as a wealthy man, but he is unknown in art collection circles, and his identity has to be verified as no jokers are allowed, though he is obviously using a phony name and a cooked-up Wikipedia profile. Bondi infiltrates the auction and is on standby, Hussein, to speed up the auction outbids everyone by placing a $60 million bid consequently winning him the necklace. However, there is a lot of mistrust between the auctioneer and Hussein because he pulled a quick one on everyone. In a flashback, Mr. Pellegrini accuses Hussein's father of stealing the queen's necklace from his safe, and he is arrested by the police as he protests his innocence. At the revealing of the necklace, Hussein is double-crossed by Bodhi who takes the necklace for himself. Anyway, there is no honor among thieves. The sound alarm goes off and commotion ensues. Bondi and his crew escape in a Ferrari. In 1995, young Hussein goes to see his father in prison, only to find that he has ended himself, and not even Mrs. Pellegrini's words can comfort him. Bondi and his team are arrested after they crash in the museum. Greed gets them cuffed. The captain asks Hussein if he knows the adventures of Arsene Lupin. In a flashback, we are shown Yan Hussein receiving the Arsene Lupin's book as a gift from his father. The events that happened in the museum were set in motion after Hussein heard about the reemergence of the Queen's necklace after it was reported lost for 25 years, presumably after being stolen by Hussein's father and cost him his life. Hussein's actions of stealing it are inspired by Arsene Lupin from the book. Back at the heist, Bowley stole the fake necklace, the real one Hussein dropped in the trash bin. In all of this, Hussein is a master thief. He played both Bodhi and the museum. In the meantime, the necklace retrieved from Bodhi is discovered to be a fake. Hussein goes to see his son, and they go out for a son and dad outing, and this puts a smile on his ex-partner's face. At a bridge, Hussein gifts his son the same Hussein Lupin book he was gifted by his dad. The second episode opens with Hussein entering a maximum security prison. Two days earlier, Hussein had inspected the jewelry with his friend who owns a pawn shop. He is told the necklace has never been taken apart meaning the Pellegrini family was lying all along about the necklace being stolen or having bought back pieces and pieces from all over the world to reconstruct it. Probably, it was with the family owned at time. In 1995, the police arrive at Hussein's apartment. He asks about his age and who he is living with. Hussein lies he is waiting for his mother to arrive, 
but the officer tells him he has to wait at the child's welfare services. When he is told to go and get his belongings, Hussein opts to play street smart and runs to escape, but he is caught. Juliet visits her mother and they discuss the necklace. At the lobby, she receives a message to meet someone, potentially the one who stole it, and the police are not welcome. The message turns out to be from Hussein. Juliet wants Hussein to return the necklace while Hussein wants to know if his father was innocent. The police are listening in and Hussein tells Juliet to confirm if the necklace was stolen or not. She doesn't bounce. With the police cornering him, Hussein runs off and manages to outwit them by blending in with the delivery guys who he had ordered. At home, Hussein reads his father's letter, where he says he is ashamed of what he is being accused of. However, in the letter, the word Comet stands out which might be a message from his late dad from the grave. Turns out, Comet was a prison mate of his dad and worked in the library. His friend tells him that he has to talk to Comet, and since Comet is in prison, Hussein has to go in. He does this by swapping a place with another man in prison, probably a man he knew from his shenanigans or a relative. Nothing will hold Hussein back from uncovering the truth. Juliet is questioned by the detective if he knew the man he met, but she threatens them with a lawsuit. The detective starts piecing together the timeline of events to the adventures of Arsene Lupin in the book. There are several crimes committed in Paris which resemble those of Arsene Lupin of the book. Taking another inmate's identity comes to haunt Arsene, as the former inmate owns some fellow's dog. To reach Comet, Lupin has to spend the night at the infirmary. To achieve this, he provokes some guys who then send him to the doctor in the infirmary. A meeting with Comet is a difficult one, as Comet is bedridden and his health is failing and there are overzealous prison guards pacing the hallways. After pressing Comet and sweet-talking him, Hussein learns that his father wanted him to pass a book to him from prison, which had all the answers. Comet wants Hussein to offer support to his wife as goodwill for his information. Hussein retrieves the book from his father's old cell. Did no books can stay hidden that long in a prison cell. The clues in the book reveal that his father was innocent and he had been framed by Pellegrini. Juliet confronts her father about the history of the necklace, but he turns violent insisting the necklace had indeed been stolen. Old man will do everything to maintain the lie. To escape from prison, Hussein steals a basketball net and pills from the smitten infirmary nurse for his visits. He makes a rock with the net, takes the pills to slow down his heart and hangs himself. We can only assume he used the net as a brace to hold his weight and the pills to slow his heartbeat, thereby faking death. In a body bag, Hussein is en route to the morgue and when the ambulance stops at a crossroad, he climbs out and disappears in the streets. Hussein visits Mrs. Pellegrini and confronts her about the deal she encouraged his father to take with the prosecutors. Mrs. Pellegrini admits she urged his father to sign the confession. The confession was to endear the judge to show some mercy, but the judge punitively sentenced him anyway. From the signature, we can assume Mr. Babakar was not that literate and took Mrs. Pellegrini's words as good advice. Mrs. Pellegrini thinks that's what led to a saying's father ending himself, as he could not bear the shame of being branded a thief. To honor Comet's promise, a saying quietly drops one of the diamonds to Comet's widow. At home, he researches Gabriel Dumont, the officer who was in charge of the necklace theft 25 years ago. Nothing seems impossible for a saying. Getting police files is only a few keyboard taps away. Commissioner Dumont leads a happy life with his family, every morning waking up to the embrace of his dear lady. Happy wife, bubbly kids, hot coffee for a blissful day. Unknowingly, Hussein has installed discreet cameras at his home and he is watching him in every room. He wants to get more information on this sleuth who put his father in prison. Hussein ends up at the commissioner's office, dressed up as an intern who wants to clean corrupt porn files from his computer. Though Commissioner Dumont is skeptical, Hussein shames him loudly that he will have to file a report about the porn in his computer to which Dumont finally caves in. When they enter the office, Hussein kidnaps Dumont and takes him to another location and preps him for interrogation. Hussein has just kidnapped a police commissioner. In 1995, Officer Dumont questions Mr. Pellegrini why he increased the necklace's insurance policy just before it was stolen, a classic scheme utilized by fraudsters all over the world and spouse murderers. Mr. Pellegrini offers vague explanations but Dumont holds his reservation of Mr. Babakar stealing the necklace because he does not fit the profile of a common thief. However, at the interrogation, Commissioner Dumont holds his ground. He assures his interrogator that Hussein's father was guilty of theft. Hussein displays a series of criminals who wire kickback money to Dumont for protection. Hussein threatens Dumont that he will tell his wife about the money. But still, Dumont sticks to his story. This is how Claire and Hussein met. They were school sweethearts. It seems no high school sweetheart story ends well. Claire works in a hospital 
and here she is reprimanding Hussein for presumably forgetting his son's birthday simply because they live separately at the police station the operation to find the kidnapped police commissioner is in full swing they track his location using his phone and checking cameras surrounding the station at the interrogation Hussein reveals himself to Commissioner Dumont who uses this angle to try and sweet talk his way to freedom following his phone location the police find the van that was used to kidnap Dumont he is not there however the detective realizes that the kidnapper used the same tricks as the Arsene Lupin in the book and following that clue they find Dumont in the subterranean sections of the city however there are no signs of the kidnapper the police start piecing the recent events with the adventures of the Arsene Lupin in the book they wonder why Dumont would lie about not knowing who kidnapped him or hesitant to divulge information the kidnapper wanted from him they realize he was in charge of the necklace case 25 years ago Pellegrini had managed to bribe Dumont even though Dumont knew the evidence was planted at home he recalls how he was wrapped in all of this Pellegrini offered to influence his career growth to which Dumont reluctantly agreed Dumont calls and tells Mr Pellegrini of the new developments regarding the necklace case and that there is a new character pulling and shoving for details Dumont and his wife emotionally embrace as she had been worrying about his safety to lighten the mood he asks Alexa to play his favorite song however Alexa plays the message Dumont has relayed to Pellegrini his wife goes into deep shock as Dumont destroys the speaker while a saying listens in evidently satisfied with the new development thank you guys for watching this video check out for part 2 like and subscribe